I'm looking forward to a time when this Freedom Forum does not only take place in Oslo, but also uh, we will uh, be uh, meeting in the uh, golf club in Havana, or um, the Presidential Palace in Zimbabwe, or maybe even the uh, Friendship Hotel in uh, Pyongyang. Uh, and I think that, uh, I think that uh, one, of the, uh, one of the dimensions I want to explore with all of you today is this question of uh, transparency and how I believe a more transparent world uh, will, will bring that day much closer uh, to, the, to the present. And I, I want to sort of explore three different dimensions of this, one that's uh, you can describe as spatial, one uh, temporal, and one more moral. And let me briefly say a little bit about each of those three. Uh, spatially, if, if you think about uh, transparency, and sort of getting at this uh, from the perspective of listening to a lot of the uh, incredible heroes uh, who we've been hearing from over the last uh, couple of days here, here in Oslo, uh, we should reflect a little bit about the strangeness of the totalitarian enemy against which uh, we are struggling. Um, and it is very strange because this enemy is, on the one hand, extremely powerful, um, and on the other hand, it is, it is somewhat weak. It is like the devil in the Middle Ages, where it is omniscient and om omnimalevolent, very powerful and very evil. And then at the same time, um, one wonders whether it exists at all, and whether it is nothing more than the collective uh, fear and anger and delusions of the crowd. And so that, uh, you know, this is sort of like this Zen paradox was summed up by an American blogger who, who said that uh, uh, there's no such thing as the government, only uh, uh, some guys in uniforms and guns who get angry at you, you if you pretend that there isn't. And, uh, and I, think, uh, I think we have this sort of, uh, this, this is one of the reasons that I think so many authoritarian states are nervous and scared about transparency and about the sharing of information because they have a sense that there is this extraordinary disconnect between the image of incredible power and the reality that there's actually nothing there at all. Um, in North Korea, it is a capital crime to uh, listen to the radio from a country other than North Korea. And of course, you know, more generally, the censorship problem is always very, very confused and difficult because uh, censorship, by definition, is a set of laws that you cannot precisely define. If you came up with a list that said, these are the things you cannot talk about. You know, you can't talk about, say, uh, Lukashenko um, um, having stolen all this money. The government of Belarus could not actually come up with the laws and explicitly make that clear. And so there's something about the sort of totalitarian state that's always very, very slippery. And, and um, making it transparent, I think, somehow would collapse the space. And it will not collapse it by a little bit, but it would collapse it completely from the space that encompasses everything to something where it does not exist at all and has no place at all. Now the second dimension that I think is, uh, is worth thinking about is a temporal one. And, uh, and one of the things uh, that is true of, of, um, of violence is that, uh, and state violence is that it is largely hidden. And if it's made transparent, it um, maybe doesn't go away altogether, but its function becomes much, much more difficult. And the temporal dimension is that uh, we hear all these uh, accounts, these terrible accounts of things that were done, but they were always done in the past. It was months ago, years ago, decades ago. And that, of course, makes it very difficult to remedy because uh, you can't quite undo the past. And uh, what I think a perfectly transparent world would look like is one in which this temporal dimension also collapses. And, uh, and we see the violence happening in real time. And, uh, and I think that sort of you would basically have time um, turned on its edge where, in effect, it is not the case that you simply see these things after the fact and then we try to fix them or prevent them, but we see them as they're happening and that probably makes it much, much harder for these things to even uh, happen in the first place. And, uh, and so I think, uh, you know, we had, a, we had a bit of an example of this with the, uh, the Iranian Revolution. It didn't quite succeed, but there was this very close race between uh, transparency, live blogging, what was happening, and uh, the government trying to stop it, trying to shut down the mobile phone networks, trying to stop people from talking about it. It was a case where the government prevailed, but it was a very close case. And I think this is the kind of uh, the way in which uh, collapsing the temporal dimension um, is, is an incredibly important way to stop these human rights abuses and make them not just things that happened in the past, but things that can no longer happen in the present. 
Uh, now, I think that uh, the end of, uh, of, of, of the Oslo Freedom Forum is to create a world in which there is no place and no time left for, uh, for violence. Um, uh, one sort of qualifier, which is the, uh, the third dimension I want to briefly mention, is that, of course, such a world uh, cannot be brought about instantaneously or immediately, or, um, it, sorry, it cannot be brought about in a way where uh, it will be necessarily be smooth, because a lot of the technologies that are used to, uh, to uh, um, th that are helping us could also be used by the state against freedom and can be used in many different ways. There's nothing about technology that automatically cuts in one direction or another. Uh, it's, it's generally been on the side of freedom, but it can also be used very much the other way. And this is, I think, one of the reasons we should not be simply utopian about technology. It is not simply about technology. It is also about people using technology. And, um, and because uh, it depends a great deal who ends up using the technology, um, it is critical uh, for us to be using the technology, for us to be the first ones to use it, and for us to be using it now. Thank you very much. Thank you.